Down through the centuries, daring men charted sea lanes round the globe. Strong men have risked their all to brave the deep in their never-ending search for conquest and great adventure. At Gloucester, we begin our voyage with adventure-loving Captain Tompkins, his family and seafaring little crew. Our home is the 85-foot schooner Wanderbird. We're San Francisco bound. Our compass is set to the course, followed by the historic clipper ships of yesteryear, round Cape Horn. The rugged New England coast fades behind as we embark upon a voyage that is today a rare experience even for fearless men. In crystal clear waters, leaping porpoises usher us to the open sea. Meet two real sea babies, our skipper's children, Anne and little Commodore, both fearless, always active on deck and aloft. They seem to bear a charmed life in fair weather and foul alike. Our Wanderbird is a tough little craft, capable of weathering mountainous seas and hurricane winds. The youngest members of our crew seek thrills aloft and an uninterrupted view of the sparkling seas far below. Eight bells and all is well as we sail for warm, smooth waters. A veteran tar goes over the side for a deep sea thrill, a dip and a splash in the biggest bathtub of them all. Man-eating sharks bathe here too, but this sailor churns the receding waters, unafraid of any danger that may be lurking below. Our wonder bird has reached the equator. Here, Father Neptune initiates the neophytes. We don't know the special purpose of this generous dubbing of shaving suds, but everyone is having great fun. Even the victim seems to enjoy his ocean bath, taken from the sea waters right on the equator. Dawn, and well down the Atlantic leg of our voyage. Romantic Rio is just ahead. Here we drop anchor for water and stores and to see one of the world's most magnificent harbors, a haven for sailormen from all the seven seas. Great Sugarloaf dominates the inspiring sight. Under it, a crescent beach of glistening sand. As deepening shadows mark the close of another day, the Wanderbird sails on again to the open sea. Soon the coastline drops away and we are far out, bound for the treacherous sea lanes that surround Cape Horn. No ancient pirate ship or modern man of war could boast of more able lookouts. Ahead, small islands. Each sunrise brings strange thrills. Today, hundreds of sea lions, proud inhabitants of a small domain that is all their own. Even among odd animals like these at the world's end, there are found mothers and babies for them to love. The work of a sailor man is never done. Even when it rains, there's a lot to do. When far from shore, fresh water is always precious, except when the heavens yield a plentiful supply. Then it is tedious, steady work. On our ship, the bosun runs the job and our husky Commodore quickly stores away the welcome gift from above. Onward, ever onward we sail before the wind, climbing to gain an unobstructed view of the fascinating sea that stirs the adventure in everyone's soul. Through calm seas that gently caress us on our way emerges a super thrill of the deep, whales, Whales to the starboard, monstrous fellows that pace our ship, apparently challenging us to a race. Great animals that belong to a prehistoric age. They seem to sense that we do not seek to capture them, so they perform close by. For generations, intrepid whalers have hunted down these mammals of the deep, but to us, they are just passing friends. Our veteran bosun finds an adept pupil in Little Anne. The target, sharks. Vicious bandits of the seas, ruthless hunters, teeth like jagged glass, always hungry, ever restless. But we are safe on deck, far removed from this peril that is swift and sure to destroy. 
Favorable winds and high seas carry us well on toward Cape Horn. We have sailed a long, long way from New England's friendly shores. Our course is ever southward. The great day dawns. We have reached Cape Horn. Famous in history, story, and song. Look well, for we may never see it again. In all their lives, few adventurous men do. The bottom piece of land of the western continents. In the vicinity of the dismal horn, the surging restless seas are unusually rough and tough. No friendly waters here. Moving clouds and the falling barometer tell our skipper that bad weather is just ahead. Hurricane winds and a high wild sea, a moving mountain range of waves. With last helm, the Wanderbird quivers, dips and rolls onto tons of water that dash against our side. The waves' white fingers reach for us as we plow through surging, burning seas. But our brave skipper, a veteran of many an angry sea, brings us safely through as he always has before. subsides, the sun shines, and slowly the wild sea becomes tranquil once again. Gulls rest on the quiet waters in their patient quest for food. A big albatross hit our rigging and fell on deck, but he soon departs. Hardened by the might of the storm, we search for new thrills in calmer waters. Troll fishing. A big marlin takes the line. Surely this is the treat for fishermen and sailormen alike. Enraged and desperate, he leaps out and pounds against the sea to free himself or to break the line. But fortunately, our line holds fast. No fancy tackle here. If we get him in, it'll be more luck than skill, for the big fellow puts up a grand fight. Our battle is won. Exhausted, we pull him up over the side. A real fisherman's prize. Now we are well along northward, in the smooth waters of the Pacific. Bright sunshine all around us. A gentle, invigorating breeze moving us on. As we near the California coast, we encounter a colony of seals sunning themselves on great rocks that jut out into the sea. Strange animals these. They keep apart from all other living things in a mysterious world of their own. On we sail. The weather is clear and fine. Suddenly the shrill cry, land ahead. Then to harbor waters we break out our signal flags. Safe in port, we come upon Golden Gate Bridge a new man-made landmark that welcomes ships from far and near. We drop anchor within San Francisco Bay, romantic haven for pioneers of the seven seas, and our thrilling voyage around Cape Horn ends at the Golden Gate.